Hey everybody, it's Carly. As promised, I am going to be starting a vlog here so that you can follow along with my breast cancer diagnosis journey. Um, I'm starting this vlog for a few reasons. First of all, I want to remember, it's for, it's for me. First of all, I want to remember how I felt. I want to remember what this time was like, um, especially before chemo starts. And I think that that's going to kind of make me a little bit I don't know. I just think it's going to be a wild ride. So I really want to um, kind of remember what this was like. And um, I'm also doing this so that people can kind of follow along on the journey as opposed to like a Caring Bridge site or, or a blog or something like that. Um, the third reason I'm doing this is to raise awareness um, to women, especially younger women like me, to please get your, um, your mammograms and um, be good about all those kinds of appointments. So this video, what I want to do, I'm not going to be telling the whole story in this video. Um, <clears throat> to keep these shorter, I would just like to start with by talking to you about how I was diagnosed. So my diagnosis is triple negative invasive ductal carcinoma, breast cancer, grade three, um, a stage three B. So that is my official clinical diagnosis. Um, I want to talk to you about how I found out that I have triple negative breast cancer and um, just kind of give you a um, a push here to make sure that you're getting your exams done. So um, I have been on a low hormone birth control to help me out with um, endometriosis for many years. And the way that I get those pills renewed every year is to make sure that I go in through for my yearly woman exam with my gynecologist. So I um, had ran out of pills and um, requested a refill and got a message in my chart saying, hey, you got to schedule an appointment with us. And I'm like, all right, I'm almost out of pills. So they go ahead, they refill it, you know, and I schedule an appointment for June. Another month goes by because this is like April and I'm asking for another refill. They remind me, hey, you got to come in for an appointment. I'm like, I got one scheduled. I'm coming in in June. You know, I'm a teacher. I'll, I'll go in in June. Okay. So they fill yet another pack of pills. June comes. I have to go. Uh, there's no more pill packs that they're going to renew without an annual exam. So I go in for my annual exam. Um, no symptoms of anything, you guys. This is just to get my pill packs removed. I mean, honestly, I'm not great about yearly any doctor exams or anything. I did this to get my birth control pills renewed. So I go in, I get the exam. Doctor doesn't feel anything, but says, hey, you know, she said, They've changed the recommended age for your first starting mammograms to 50. She goes, I think that's absolutely ridiculous. Um, she said, I've had a lot of young women get a mammogram just this year alone that, that ended up having breast cancer. Um, you're 42. I think it would be a good idea for you to get one. I said, all right, okay, that's you've convinced me. I'll get one. I went home, made an appointment to get a mammogram the following week. Um, in the meantime, I was honestly worried about what a mammogram would be like. I had heard horror stories. I was sitting there like practicing squishing my boobs and seeing if I could handle it. To be honest, I did that. Um, I watched YouTube videos and I was like, okay, this does not look as bad as what I've heard um, and imagined and created in my head. Went and got my mammogram done. <clears throat> Guys, it was no big deal. For real. No big deal. I promise you. If you're worried about getting a mammogram, I will tell you right now, it is nothing. It is the most easy appointment I have ever done. It's like nothing. Okay, I get that done. The tech tells me it's really common to get called back for more imaging after your first one because we have nothing to compare it to, no other previous scans. So I'm like, all right. She's like, so don't be worried if you get called back. Okay, I get called back, not for more imaging, but for a breast ultrasound on the right breast. I'm still not so worried about it. I'm like, okay, they see something. The tech had told me they don't know my, my breasts, you know, yet. So, all right, I'll go in. I'll get this ultrasound done. So I go to the appointment. I um, An ultrasound, of, I don't remember how much later it was, like maybe a week later or something like that. And I see on the screen what they're concerned about. They're like, there it is. You know, it's this oval mass i mean it looks like it's like this big on the screen it's not that big <laughs> ended up being a little over three centimeters so that's like you know a little over an inch in size and they're like this is what we're looking at and i'm like okay well the tech is you know thinks she's about done but she's like you know i'm, I'm gonna call the radiologist in here now i know i'm no dummy I know that when they want to call the radiologist in or another doctor or whatever to take a look at something 
there might be a concern. And I'm like, mm, I feel a little bit like, oh boy. The radiologist comes in, she takes a look. And one of the things that was concerning in my case was the area of concern was highly vascular, which meant it had a lot of blood flow in it. Um, and she, after the radiologist went ahead and went through, um, uh, looked at the, looked at um, the mass in question herself, she said, I, I th would like to get a biopsy. She's like, there's some things about this that look really benign. You know, the fact that it's ovular is something that generally would, you would think would be benign. Cancer generally looks a little more jagged, like around the margins, um, and just can look a little different from an oval. She said, but the fact that it's highly vascular is kind of concerning. It could be you just have some really big blood vessels in there, it, you know, but let's do a biopsy just to make sure. I thought, good idea. I left there, I was upset actually. I, once I left, I started crying. It scared me. It was, I don't know, it, it's just that if everything's okay, I generally know, okay? And I didn't have a strong feeling that everything was going to be okay. Um, and usually I do, usually I do. I, my intuition has always been really good and sometimes that scares the crap out of me, to be honest. So I get home and before the nurse navigator can even schedule me for a biopsy, I call her. I'm like, can you get me in? I leave on a trip in like five days um, <clears throat> with my family. Well, there's no opening. So they decide that they'll do the biopsy when I get back. Um, the trip was great, by the way. I was able to not really worry. But I always in the back of my head was like, ah, just not sure about this. When I got back from my trip, I had the biopsy two days later. I brought my um, bestie here in Madison with me. We had a blast, to be honest. We just, I think neither one of us were like really thinking, you know, this is going to be bad. So we just, we were making jokes and just being ourselves and stuff. You know, we, I mean, it was actually fun. <laughs> I'm so glad she came with and made the process easier. Um, <clears throat> then they got the biopsy and I went home and was very eager to hear the results. Of course, I'm sure everybody can relate to that. And, um, I was told, you know, these results might come into my chart. Well, they will come into my chart at the same time that your doc, they, they, go to your doctor. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to open them. Someone will be calling you though, but we can't prevent the results from coming to you at the same time they come to the doctor. Now, I can tell you right now, my ex used to work for Epic and I swear <laughs> if he still did, I would say, can you get them to change that? Um, but nope, I got the results and I opened them. They came on a Monday night and it said, I was scanning, I was scanning, I was scanning, I was looking for the word benign and I was looking for the word malignant. What I saw was neither of those words. I saw invasive ductal carcinoma, grade three. And I thought, what does that mean? I Googled, honestly, you guys, I had no idea what carcinoma meant, for real. I Googled carcinoma, saw cancer, messaged my childhood bestie. She called me right away from Iowa and said, honey, it's cancer. I'm gonna go into your my chart. I'd given her my login. I'm gonna go into your my chart. I'm gonna read it and I'll call you back. Skipping ahead to that evening, I was a mess. All I could think about was my kids. I just saw cancer and my friend had told me, you know, she's like, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It's not good. It's invasive. You need to get, get it taken care of right away. You know, um, so it was a horrible couple of days. Um, so that is how I got my diagnosis. Um, going forward, I learned um, from my oncologist uh, after a lot of tests, you get a lot of tests. Um, I learned that I am a, well, I'm a triple negative. So let me explain that for a minute. You don't need to know exactly what that means, right? But basically that's the worst kind of breast cancer to get. It's the bad girl of breast cancers, all right? It's the most invasive, it's an absolute bitch. And uh, having triple negative breast cancer, it's harder to treat. It's, you gotta be, you gotta, it's, it's, um, it's a crazy regiment that they use to treat it. A lot of chemo, um, and all breast cancers, yes, are terrible, but this is just the bad girl one, as they call it. Okay. So it's invasive, um, not as common. And yeah, so I have swallowing that information and have made some peace with that, but I then learned that by the grace of God, I am not a stage four, I'm a stage three B which is serious, but treatable, um, curable still. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, so that is what I have learned 
invasive ductal carcinoma, triple negative breast cancer, grade three, stage three B, um, all these terms that I'm beginning to understand. Um, so I want to encourage everybody, whether you have, well, especially if you have a history of breast cancer in your family, if you are even in your 30s, will you please talk to your gynecologist about this? Please, everybody, feel free to share my story and my experience. I'm 42. Um, this stuff grows so fast. Uh, this particular one, my oncologist told me it's very possible if I would have had a mammogram a year ago, it wouldn't even have been here yet. That's how quickly it grows. Um, and please just advocate for yourself and get a mammogram, especially if you're 40. If you are at least 40, please get one. Please get them every year. Um, you could save potentially be saving your own life. Um, so that's where I'm going to end for today. I have many more things to tell you and that I will um, continue with this vlog. But today, just wanted to get the message out, my story, how it happened, and, um, and encourage you to please get yourself checked. All right, I'll be back um, at some point um, with part two. I start chemo tomorrow. Wish me luck. Thank you for all of the prayers. Thank you, my friends, my family. I love you all. I'll talk to you soon.